Think PC gaming is too expensive for you? I've got a $680 1440p gaming PC that might change your mind. Hi, welcome back to PC Builder, I'm Jason. Now you'd be forgiven if you thought that PC gaming was only for rich people buying $1,600 RTX 4090s, but you'd also be wrong. Truth is, it's never been cheaper to build an amazing 1440p gaming PC than it is right now. So today we're gonna go through three 1440p gaming PC builds starting at less than $680 they are gonna give you an amazing experience for less than the cost of an RTX 4070. Uh, I mean RTX 4080 12 gigabyte. If you get value out of the video, please give it a like as it really helps out the channel. And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. With that, Let's jump into it. Before that, this video is sponsored by VIP SCD Key. Say goodbye to crazy expensive Windows 10 licenses and that terrible Activate Windows 10 watermark. Right now, use the links in the video description, head over to VIP SCD Key, and get a Windows 10 Home or Pro OEM license for a great price. Pick your product license, then use the PC Builder discount code PC25 for an additional 25% off. Go to the activation settings on your PC, put in the code, and boom, you have a fully licensed Windows 10 for a crazy low price, which can be upgraded for free to Windows 11. Use the links in the video description below. Let's start off with our $680 1440p gaming PC build. I can't believe we're seeing budget 1440p gaming PC builds this cheap. It's absolutely insane. How does this happen? Are we using a used graphic? Graphics card, for instance? No, we are absolutely not. I do think if you're interested in used graphics cards because uh, Ethereum went to proof of stake, GPU mining has ended, and we are beginning to see the flood of used GPUs hit that market, but it's only been a couple of weeks that I'm filming this video. So I would give it another month, another two months, if that's an option that you really want to go down. I think you will see like an RTX 3090 and 3080s at absolutely insane prices. We will do future content on that, but let's talk about new parts build because I think that's where most users still are. They want to build something and they want to get a warranty with it. They want it to be brand new for them. And we want to talk about the kinds of graphics cards that you're going to be looking for. So let's take a look. This is the TechSpot 12 game average at 1440p from their ARC A770 and A750 review. What do I think about ARC? Nobody should buy it. Nobody should buy it. You should avoid it like the plague. I don't think that this is for a regular consumer. I would not feel comfortable recommending this for a regular consumer. Let's talk about the GPUs I would recommend. Look at that Radeon RX 6650 XT, 84 average FPS at 1440p, smokes the A770, smokes the 3060, which is a way more expensive graphics card because right now that 6650 XT, at least in the US, $285, that's insane value. Now you will see, of course, the RX 6600 XT is selling for more. I believe the 6600 XT is being phased out in favor of the 6650 XT, that's why you see that price disparity. So definitely make sure to check the price on that 6650 XT as you're checking the price on the 6600 XT. But even something like the RX 6600 pulls 70 FPS at 1440p across a wide range of titles. That's pretty amazing. Now, if you're somebody who absolutely has some NVIDIA, there are some decent-ish values out there. We're talking about the RTX 3060 Ti, possibly the RTX 3070. However, I would again point you to the RX 6700 XT which 103 FPS, and that's a card going for $390 US right now. Pretty insane value. So that's the type of GPU that we're looking at to play all these games, relatively high frame rates in 1440p at high quality settings. Obviously, if you turn the quality settings down just a little bit, you could push these well over 100 FPS. But it isn't just the price of graphics cards that's changed, all the other components are absolutely dirt cheap right now. Let's start off with the memory. DDR4, if you want a 16 gigabyte kit, a two by eight kit, 3200 CL16, and this is absolutely fun. We've tested this. We know that if you're playing at 1440p, there is no difference between 3200 and 3600 and 4000 speed memory. There's just no difference at 1440p. You are gonna be GPU bound. It doesn't matter. You don't need faster memory. 3200 is pretty much the floor for what you need. $45, $45. And before you think, that, oh, this is just some one-off kit. Yeah, let's see what, what are the kits running. 
Look how many kits we've got here below $50. In fact, if you want RGB, you can get RGB kits for as little as $53 or $52.49. That is totally insane. Similarly, NVMe storage has gotten stupidly, stupidly cheap. 512 gigabytes for $34, $35 if you add the penny. That is insane. And yes, 512 gigs will get you started. That's an absolutely fine drive. I wouldn't go down to 256. I would prefer one terabyte, but 512, you can definitely get away with this. And if you want, add another 30 bucks and you can get a one terabyte drive if that storage really matters to you. In fact, the storage is getting so cheap, they are beginning to look competitive with hard drive storage, and that's insane. Of course, what's powering our build? The i3-12100F. This is an incredible gaming value CPU absolutely destroys, even though it's only got four cores and eight threads. I say only four cores and eight threads. Those are smoking fast, four cores and eight threads. It destroys the 11400F, its predecessor that had six cores and 12 threads because it's on a different process, better cache, Everything is better about these CPUs. So if you're looking for budget gaming performance, this is really where I would focus my efforts because you wanna get the fastest GPU you can and then just get a CPU that's not gonna bottleneck it. Yes, if you do wanna jump up about 10% more performance, you can get the 12400F or you can go with a Ryzen 5600 instead. We're pairing this with just relatively cheap B660 motherboard. Now, one note of caution on the B660 motherboards is that if you do wanna go with a 12 400 f or 12 600 or another locked cpu some of these motherboards do not run them at the full frequency once you get above the i3 but for the i3 pretty much anything you get will be absolutely fine so i simply went with the asrock b660m uh, phantom gaming motherboard it's got a couple of vrm heat sinks on it unfortunately the 8610 motherboards will also be just fine because we're only using 3200 speed memory however that being said the b660s are actually selling for cheaper at least in the us the other thing i really love about the i3 is it comes with an included box cooler that is absolutely fine and in our build you can't even hear it once you have the glass panel put back on especially over the case fans the case fans are noisier than that so you can if you want aesthetics you can spend another twenty dollars we'll go through a couple of budget tower air coolers that you could possibly put in its place however that being said the stock cooler is pretty amazing so rounding out the build as we said we went with the rx 6650 xt for 285 dollars on this one then for the case the case and the power supply you're really just looking for good enough so for instance for the case we went with one that's on sale right now at Newegg. That's the Roswell Prism S500. It's not bad, kind of unusual. The airflow comes actually from the bottom down here with three fans, another one in the rear. But you're just looking for at least two intake and one exhaust with decent amount of airflow. Uh, some other alternatives you can consider is like the Zalman S2. That was the case that you saw at the beginning of the video. This one does pretty well. The front two fans are Molex. If that's annoying for you, you can certainly decide to spend a little bit more money on something. S3, same case basically just different aesthetic design and then you can always look at something like you know a nice white ARGB case for 67 68 dollars more like the Antec NX410. For the power supply, we just ended up picking, honestly, the cheapest unit that we could find that's at least C-tier rated or better on the PSU cultist list. If you missed our best PSU buying guide for 2022, how to size and buy the right PSU and ignore those 80 plus ratings because they're trash, then check out a video link down in the description. We'll go through all of that and you'll be buying PSUs like a pro. For instance, the Thermaltake Top Power GX2, this is a C-tier rated unit, nothing to write home about, but only $50. Pretty Pretty insane for 600 watts. So for $680, absolutely insane value. Of course, check the links down in the video description. We'll have all the parts linked there. You can see what pricing is like in your region right now for a similarly spec unit. But for less than $700, it's hard to beat. Obviously, if you want to get a cheap Windows license from our sponsor, you can throw that in there. Maybe you end up closer to $700. We'll go through some mice, some keyboards, and some monitors as well towards the end of the video that you might want to pair with this. But let's talk about for a second how we might upgrade it. So if you got about $100 more to spend or you absolutely have to have NVIDIA for some reason, then we're, I think we're looking about $785 to $800. And we want to spend that money upgrading the graphics card. It does not make any sense right now to upgrade the CPU. You'll get about 10% more performance upgrading the CPU. You'll get 20, 25% performance upgrading the GPU for that same amount of money. Obviously, we'll take the bigger uplift. And I think we want to look at the RX 6700 XT for about $390. So that's where our 100 bucks is going. Now, I know some people really want the 6700 
700 non-XT card to be a thing. 369, it's only 20 bucks cheaper. I would just go for the XT card. And similarly for the 6750 XT, the cheapest one I can find right now is more like $470. So again, that doesn't make any sense either. I think the 6700 XT is really the best price of performance if you're looking to increase your overall performance and hit above that 100 FPS mark. If you absolutely have to have Nvidia for whatever reason, I would look at the RTX 3060 Ti. I think that has the best price to performance of any of the Nvidia GPUs right now, pretty much at any level. So $449, there's actually a card down here with a promo code and with the rebate, you can get the, I think this is the MSI, maybe Supreme X or whatever, uh, slightly nicer looking GPU for about $439. That's what you're looking to spend. Now remember the 3060 Ti, less performance than the RX 6700 XT, but some people absolutely just for whatever reason have to have Nvidia, this is where I would be looking. And just really quickly, why would I avoid the 3070? Because you're not getting that much more performance and you're spending quite almost a hundred dollars more to also not get that much more performance. So it doesn't really make a lot of sense, at least in my eyes. If you have more like $850, now we're $170 over our initial budget, where would I go next in terms of upgrades? Well, I would take a look at gaining about 10% by going to a slightly faster CPU and that's the Ryzen 5 5600. Are you going to get exactly 10%? Probably depends on the games you play. Some games you may not see much of a difference at all, but I would certainly look at bumping up the CPU. I think you're going to get a little bit more system longevity out of it. Either the 12400F or the Ryzen 5600, absolutely equal performance. The reason I'm going 5600 here, and we'll go through this, is that for whatever reason right now in the US, the 5600 is just significantly cheaper. The B550 motherboards are significantly cheaper than the Intel B660 motherboards. So it just seems to make a lot more sense going Ryzen right now, but if that's different in your market, certainly look at going the i5-12400F. Just remember that you got to get the right motherboard for that, otherwise not all those boards run it at the full frequency. So as we said, Ryzen 5 5600, you can go 5600X here if it's not much more. Right now it's about $40 more. Doesn't really make sense uh, in my mind to do that. So we're going to go with the 5600. Now we could go with the included box cooler, of course. We do get a little bit of a, a performance boost by going with a budget tower air cooler like the id cooling se214 xt this is the smallest cooler i would put on it you can get slightly more performant coolers that are similar budget tower air coolers for like 35 to 40 dollars but i think this is a nice one argb it's going to give you slightly better system temps slightly more performance out of your cpu and it's not going to break the bank i went with the gigabyte b550m ds3h do i think you have to go at this point with a motherboard with bios flashback for the 5600 i would just play it safe and do that because that cpu did not actually come out that long ago. Still a lot of motherboards out there with older BIOSes on them that aren't going to be able to support this without flashing the BIOS. That's why I want BIOS flashback. If instead you were going with something like the 5600X, then yes, you can look at some of the boards and there are some really good ASRock boards out there that I've been dying to recommend, but unfortunately because they don't have BIOS flashback on them, I just don't want people to get stuck with a board they can't use. So I've, I've held off on recommending them. Everything else in this build is pretty much the same. We're using the same kit of memory, the same storage. We're using the same graphics card, 6700 XT, same case, same power supply. That's the great thing about Ryzen and 12th gen Intel at the lower end is that really really power efficient on these things. You don't have to overspend on your PSU or other components. So what, of course, if you've got about 950, maybe a thousand dollars to spend and you want premium everything, including more premium audio, you want RGB. Here's where I would go. Same build, Ryzen 5600. We've got the same cooler, but for the motherboard, we went with the Asus Tough Gaming B550 Pro. It's got an ALC 1220 audio codec on it. So that's great. If you plug in uh, headphones into the front panel and you're playing with that, that'll give you extra support for that better signal the noise ratio and it's just overall better motherboard. We also went with an RGB kit of memory for about 10 bucks more. You know, again, you can pick and choose which kit that you like. And we ended up going with a slightly higher performance a more prosumer level PCIe Gen 3 drive for about $80 instead of the more budget tier oriented one terabyte drive. Similarly, on the Intel side, if you're looking, it comes out to about $987. So it's about 40 bucks more. Again, that's because the 12400F for whatever reason, it's just more money right now than the 5600. And the boards you're looking at for the B660, now I went with a mortar Wi-Fi here. There is like the Tomahawk for a little bit more money. I will warn you though, you're very quickly getting into the range where a lot of the Z690 boards are now about $170, where it almost makes more sense just to grab a Z690 board for that $20, $30 price premium 
And you, what you're adding is future upgradability to even like a 13900K in the future, kind of attractive on that. I might just skip some of these mid-level B660 boards and go straight for those kind of cheaper, but still very nice Z690 boards. Folks are always asking for full setup guides when I do these build guides. So let's go ahead and go through a couple of things that I would recommend. All this stuff's gonna be more on the more budget conscious side since we're trying to do budget 1440p today. So I would start off with the Logitech G502 Hero. This is just tried and true, amazing gaming mouse, currently selling for about $42 right now, often goes on sale for as little as $28 or $30 sometimes. Another keyboard that I really like, I actually have two of these, is the Red Dragon K550. For only $33, it's a mechanical keyboard. Listen, you can certainly get far better keyboards. You can spend way too much on keyboards, in my opinion. But if you're looking to get started and get something that's going to be good enough to get you gaming, I really like this one. And then, of course, if you just want the mouse and the keyboard all together, not a bad combo for $48. That's the K552 along with a budget gaming mouse. Not the best mouse, but again, something to get you started for only $50. Bucks. In terms of the monitors, my overall recommendation remains the same. If you haven't seen our best 1440p gaming monitor video, you got to check it out. But the budget recommendation is a really solid one, which is the Gigabyte M27Q-P, also called the M27Q Pro. It's better than the old M27Q, which I still recommend. It was good because it gets rid of that BGR uh, sub-pixel layout and it goes with a much better one. So you can use this not only for gaming and content creation, but it's a great monitor for everyday use as well. $279. My alternative continues to be the HP X27Q, if you can't find the M27P in your market, this is another really good option. $243, that is an insane value for great 1440p budget entry level monitors. I cannot seriously believe these prices. So if we take our original $680 1440p gaming PC and we add in the monitor M27Q for $279 and we add in the mouse and keyboard combo for about $50, the Red Dragon one, for $1,000, $1,000, $1,009, you get an amazing gaming PC that is capable of playing pretty much all games at 1440p at good frame rates. That's absolutely incredible. It's less than the cost of an RTX 4080 16 gigabyte, and it's only $100 more than the cost of an RTX 4070, excuse me, I mean 4080 12 gigabyte, which is absolutely insane. You do not need to spend those kinds of prices to enjoy PC gaming. Let me know down in the comments, what kind of 1440p gaming PC build are you looking to do? And remember, if you got value out of the video, give it a like, it makes a huge difference to the channel. And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon, that way you get notified when we release cool content. Of course, if you're looking for the best 1440p gaming monitor to go with your new 1440p gaming PC build, check out this video right here. We go through all the best 1440p gaming monitors on the market right now, and we'll catch you on the next one.